You know, obviously uh, the pandemic was horrible for everybody, but you know, in our sphere of influence, very few was it, did it hit harder than the movie theater industry? Because it's pretty tough to run your business when there's no movies and nobody coming to the theaters. And a lot of theaters shut down. I mean, one of our beloved in Los Angeles here, the Arclight Cinema, is now no more. I mean, and several other smaller chains folded as well. And not all chains can be as ass lucky as AMC Theaters was that some random people did a meme stock of their thing, which basically saved their company. But somehow, some way, Cineworld and Regal Cinemas, they found a way to survive it without being ass lucky with a meme stock. They found a way to survive it. But, when you combine still reeling from everything in the pandemic to no product, no legitimate product coming out recently to draw people into the theaters, we talked a little while ago that there were whispers that Cineworld, who also own Regal Cinemas here in the U.S., maybe looking at bankruptcy, and today it happened. Uh, this is over on Variety, but Regal owner Cineworld commences Chapter 11, that's bankruptcy proceedings, in Texas bankruptcy court, why does everything bad happen in Texas? True. As I look at the two ladies over here. I mean, uh, we this weren't is, born there, but we cause trouble. <laughs> we do. <laughs> this is what it says here on Bryce says, the debt-laden Cineworld Group and its subsidiaries have commenced Chapter 11 cases in the United States bankruptcy court for the Southern District of Texas, the company revealed on Wednesday. Now, before any of us jump to the conclusion that that means, oh, as of this afternoon, all Regals and Cineworlds are all closing the doors. No. Bankruptcy is a step. It's a mechanism. It's a tool, ideally, to allow a company an opportunity to survive, to restructure and survive. It goes on to say this. The company, Cineworld, which owns Regal Cinemas in the U.S., said in a statement, as a part of the Chapter 11 cases, Cineworld, with the expected support of its secured lenders, will seek to implement a deleveraging transaction that will significantly reduce the group's debt strengthen its balance sheet and provide the financial strength and flexibility to accelerate and capitalize on Cineworld's strategy for the cinema industry. Basically, that means it's going to give us a minute. So that's, yeah. that's basically, that's all legalese for just give us a minute to catch our breath and we'll restructure and get things right here. Now, it does not look right now like Cineworld or Regal are about to go under. It, it, that doesn't look, it sounds tr also like their debt partners are working with them to make sure they can get this all sorted out and come out the other side. It may mean your local Cineworld or your local Regal might close. They might mean a downsizing of the whole operation. Maybe yes, maybe no, don't know. But I mean, it's just a reminder that the effects, as we talked about this during the pandemic, it's like the effects of what's going on in the pandemic are going to be felt for a couple of years after. And we are seeing that kind of play out right now with Cineworld and Regal. Well, of course, this Regal, the second biggest movie theater chain in the U.S., mm -hmm. next to AMC, who got ass lucky and got a meme stock to keep them alive. But anyway, Chris, you hear about this. What are your thoughts? Oh, man. I mean, Cineworld's huge. They have over 9,000 screens. They operate over 10 countries. So it is wild to see a giant like this tumble down, right? But they accumulated like five billion dollars worth of debt yeah. over the course of the pandemic billion with a b y'all so oh. it does make sense um filing for this from my understanding and please note i know about money the same way michael scott does when i hear this <laughs> i immediately think of like i, I declare, declare bankruptcy, bankruptcy. <laughs> um, i defer to jonathan for financial information on this but we all should, do right <laughs> it should allow for them to at least restructure I'm just concerned with how they're going to go throughout this restructuring process while they're going to be in such a drought for content. I mean, the rest of the year until November, really, we don't have a lot of big blockbusters coming into theaters. So I'm interested to see what moves they're going to make to try to get butts in seats until we can get to Black Panther. It's basically. like Daniel Day-Lewis in Last of the Mohicans mm -hmm. saying, stay alive. It's like that's Black Panther 2 calling out to Regal. Just stay just alive till November. <laughs> exactly. Just stay, get to November. Anyway, uh, Aaron, you hear about that? I mean, listen, we are still faced with the harsh realities of this stuff. So what do you think about it? Oh, yeah. I mean, when you say that the that the effects of the pandemic are going to be felt for several more years, I mean, I think that there even a decade from now, I think that there's still going to be things that we go, oh, well, you know, the stupid COVID hadn't happened. Um, like there's always going to be a collateral damage that we discover after the fact. And and it's not even just with um, the, the drought of product. It's also with consumers still being a little anxious about going back to the theaters. There's still some. You know, yeah. there, there's still that going on. And, you know, I agree with both of you. The uh, the the declaration of bankruptcy 
does not auto always equal a death sentence. There are plenty of companies that have been able to declare bankruptcy, get their stuff in order, and then be able to go on and regroup. I remember, you know, I'm a big fan of Detroit. Love it. It's like my second home. And when the city of Detroit declared bankruptcy, everybody was like, oh, my God, this is terrible. Sometimes it's just you need to get to a certain place to get all of your ducks in a row and then be able to move forward in a more structured way. I think that the, them declaring bankruptcy is a way of going, OK, we're we have to do this legally and to take the next proper steps in order to move forward as a company. And I hope that they're bringing in some really smart people who are going to be able to help them to whatever the next chapter is, because what we don't want to happen is after a drought of content, we don't want them to have a drought of uh, exhibition. Yeah. You know, we want to be able to when that content comes and it's going to be a tidal wave because everything's in production now. When that content comes, we want to make sure that it is available to the people who want to see it, i.e. all of you. And by the way, the, the pandemic isn't the only problem for Regal because as a Canadian, uh, I got real damn excited a couple of years ago when I found out that Cineworld was also, not only do they own Regal, they were going to buy Cineplex, which is oh. the national chain in Canada that has pretty much gone to hell. And I was all excited that Cineworld was going to buy them. And then Cineworld was like, oh, yeah, things are pretty bad. Yeah, we're going to back out of the buying deal. It's like, but the contracts were signed. And so they're still facing a lawsuit from Cineplex as well. Ooh. So there's still that on top of everything else, too. So anyway, lots of stuff going on there. Question is for you guys. What do you think about this? I mean, yeah, the, the worst of the pandemic seems to be all behind us now, but the effects are still rolling on. Do you think Regal and Cineworld are going to survive this? I think they will. They'll probably come out the other side. But what's it going to look like when they do? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and leave us your thoughts. We want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks. Guys, I have been an enthusiastic fan and user of Storyblocks for years. I go to them whenever I'm in need of content creation assets like royalty-free music, video clips, or templates for my creative projects, ranging anywhere from little editorial videos to my very own full feature documentary. Storyblocks helps you bring your stories, videos, and projects to life without sacrifices due to time, budget, or access to resources. They have over 1 million different story assets, ranging from stock videos, audio and music, an in-browser video editor, and they feature pre-designed templates, animations, and outros. Storyblocks uses an affordable subscription model and their unlimited access plans offers, well, unlimited video and audio downloads rather than a costly pay-per-clip model. With Storyblocks, you'll be able to create more content and more importantly, better content, all while using a subscription plan that fits your budget, utilizing unlimited downloads of demand-driven and diverse content. So if you're interested in upping your content creation game, head over to W www.storyblocks.com slash campia and get started today. That's www.storyblocks.com slash campia.